All right, guys, I'm back. Um, just want to show you how I uh, do these Molexes. So, like I said before, I have my hole up here. Uh, my negative, actually, this will be. So this will be my negative going out and up to the drivers. So I always start with uh, the amber. And it looks like I'm gonna be going, and basically I just measure it out, go up, and this LED, and I pull it past the hole and about an inch outside the heat sink, and that gives me uh, a guideline to how long I want this wire. So I take it and be right back in for my snips. Alright, so I get my snips, snip it at the accordion length. From there, I strip the wire, and I strip the wire about half an inch, probably actually less than half an inch. Strip it, and then I have my uh, solder here, nice and hot. And this is basically how I do the pins. So the ones from the heat sink, I think I did, I did the female connector, and I think there was one I screwed up on somewhere. Yep. I'm gonna save that one for last, but basically I stick it in these uh, very convenient clamps. Just like that. And uh, I take my solder. I believe this is my third tube of solder for this whole project. I had to go buy another one. Um, and then I'll tin this thing to make it easier to get it hotter. And I just stick this right underneath the pin. And I apply solder to where the wire will go. And then I take my tweezers, which have been very helpful throughout this build. Pick up where I strip the wire. Heat up the pin again. And just stick the wire down in there. And then since you heat up metal, actually takes longer to cool since the temperature of the solders actually uh, depends on the temperature of the pin so when you heat up the pin the pins gonna stay hotter for longer than what the solder would so the solder takes a little bit longer to melt but basically I have uh, the pin uh, soldered to the wire and for added uh, strength in which I think you can do this without soldering but uh, they got these flaps here. I just take a needle nose and uh, bend them over. So yeah, I think you can do it without soldering, but I think it's kind of risky. If there's any tugging or anything, it can pull out. So the solder helps, and these are just for added protection. So now those flaps are down. And after that, take my snips and stripper and strip it just a tiny bit because this side's going to be connected to the LED and once I take that I feed my pin through the hole move it to my LED and I'm going to add a little bit more solder to this pad And uh, I know in my other videos you saw that I, I pre-tinned all the LEDs off of the heat sink, but really I've done a ton, I've probably redone like almost half, three-fourths of the LEDs on the heat sink and I was able to um, heat them up fine enough to do that. So if, if, if you're doing a project like this, I don't think it's that big of a deal if you pre-tint them. Um, I think it is faster to do it before you start your project, but if you need to add more tin, there's, it's, it's not very hard as long as you have... Uh, uh, higher watt uh, soldering iron to uh, heat up the solder when it's on the heat sink. So that hasn't been a problem for me at all. But uh, anyway, just want to route my wire kind of to where I want it. Take my 
exposed copper wire to the pad or side on top of it and just make sure I get a good connection and uh, one thing I want to say is that if you're doing a project like this I did not invest the money in a nice soldering station as in you have a power block that the soldering iron plugs into and you can change the temperature on it with a nice um, uh, brass uh, cleaner where I just have a sponge and a 40 watt direct plug in but I'd recommend it because uh, as I've used this solder I've gotten more and more cold joints and uh, the tip isn't you know I've, I've been tinning it but the tip kind of goes to crap so uh, if you're doing a very big project or if you plan on doing a lot of projects with soldering I would recommend getting a nice station. They're about, I think there's a $90, I forgot, I think it's, I forgot the name of it. I thought it was like Heco or something like that. I, I, I forget, but uh, I'd recommend getting a nice soldering station if you're gonna do something like this because I have noticed that I get more and more uh, uh, cold joints rather than the nice smooth um, joints that I got in the beginning of the project. So uh, I'm gonna try to fix that. I usually fix it by heating it up, putting some solder on it. That was a big glob of solder. Oh, another thing, some of this uh, sponge will actually get on the tip and leave it all fuzzy and that can make a mess too. But, uh, and after I put a bunch of solder on it, I take my uh, desoldering vacuum pump thing and just hit it. Take some more solder to this. And it's still not doing anything. There you go. Alright, so I got a pretty good joint there. That one's not going anywhere. And then I just push my wire down, and there's a uh, one connection, and this will later push into a Molex, which I'll show you. Um, but that's basically what I do for all the channels. I mean, again, this is the negative side. And after I do that, uh, I, I use zip ties to kind of help keep the uh, wires down and organized. Um, I haven't zip tied, excuse me, I haven't zip tied the uh, other heat sink completely yet. There's probably two zip ties on there. But I'll probably put around like six zip ties on each heat sink, just wherever I need them to keep the wires uh, down and organized. And there's a big bunch of them. I'll just uh, uh, zip tie them together to make them more organized and uh, less of a mess. So uh, I'm going to continue on uh, doing these uh, pins for the outputs and I'll uh, get back to you.